There we go. Got him, guys. Oh, I almost had him, guys. Ready to go, he'll... <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, Kevin Rapcook Fishing. Back out at the Phoenix Canals today. Guys, yes! It is under 100 degrees. The streak has been broken. I think it was something like 110 straight days over 100. Done. We finally had a day under 100 yesterday. Stayed in the 90s. Today is in the 90s. I've been walking this canal for a little bit today. The grass carp are back feeding on top. So I have the six weight fly rod, floating line, 10 pound fluorocarbon with a short little section at the end of eight pound fluorocarbon that I union knotted on and then a black ant. Guys, I am so pumped up. It feels good out here. Oh my gosh, it's such a huge difference when it's not over 100 degrees, when it's not 110 degrees. Again, it's in the 90s, September 17th. We finally made it. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm excited. Let's try to catch some fish, let's get to it. A Little bit closer look at the fly we're using today. Normally I'm using cicadas, but I've been throwing them out lately and it's been spooking the fish, I don't know. Again, today's different because I have seen fish feeding on top. This one lands a little softer than the cicadas I have. I like stuff with legs because when that fly is sitting on top of the water and the wind is moving the top of the water this way, that little bit of water hitting those legs makes the legs flutter and can be more attractive to any fish, uh, but especially attractive to carp today. So that's why I chose this one with the legs that this has, but I cut the legs down a little bit. They were hanging, they're almost twice this length. And I think with grass carp, the way they feed and really just barely sip on that fly, I think that's given them too much of a fly, not enough hook. So I shortened down the legs to try to help us get better hook set. So let's get to it guys. next to his head and he turned around and looked for what it was. This wind is making it a little tough. There we go. Got him guys. Nice. Yes. Yes. Persistence paid off with that one. He, <laughs> I threw it by his head and he turned around and looked for it. And that's when you know, oh, they're ready to eat. And then, uh, oh man. And then I cast it a couple more times and he was looking for whatever dropped. <laughs> that's awesome oh man I'm not sure how well I have them hooked because the, th the two that I've missed so far barely were taking that in so we're gonna walk them down to some stairs here so we can land them uh, this is why we have the big net with us oh this is sweet guys it feels so good to be back in the 90s here and having grass carp feeding on top <laughs> I am so happy right now it has been a long tough summer here in arizona and uh oh my gosh to have these fish feeding back on top again is a blast because dry fly fishing for these is awesome it's just awesome i love it and uh yeah this is awesome so we're walking them down um, if you haven't seen the channel before or haven't seen me fishing these canals you can see the slope and with these bigger fish it's almost impossible to land them on these slopes so you got to walk down to these stairwells they're marked by those that yellow paint you can see down there and there's one behind me about 20 yards so i'm basically just walking this fish down keeping the rod a little bit low into the side so so he's not wanting to come straight up and shake his head too much and uh and you kind of get him into a groove 
he'll start to fight a little bit more as I bust out the net and get him closer to netting. But right now he's kind of in a groove of just coming with me. Um, and that's what you want. You want to get him kind of straightened out into a good place. Uh, loosen up your, you want to keep your drag, you know, kind of tight enough to bring them in, but loose enough to let them run when they need to run. And, uh, but yeah, he'll start to get a little more feisty once he sees me, sees the net, but, oh man, I'm so pumped up to have these things feeding again. Oh uh, yeah. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm not sure how well I have them hooked. Oh, there he goes. Yep. Yeah, there he goes. So they're going to do that. So you just know they're going to have a few of those runs in them. When I see how well they're hooked, that kind of determines how hard I play them. If, uh, if that hook's barely in their mouth, you know, I'm going to loosen up the drag and play them a little softer. If I feel like I got a pretty strong hook set, um, might play them more aggressively. As I mentioned earlier, because they've been spooky lately, I have like that last stretch of line, that last like two feet of line is eight pound test. And this fish is, eh, I don't know, seven, eight pounds probably. He's probably pushing eight. Of course, if he's underwater, he's lighter than the eight pound test. If I pull him straight out of water, he probably breaks the line. Um, so you wanna try to keep him underwater and uh, try to get this fish to the net. I think he's hooked pretty decently, actually. I can see the fly coming out of his mouth, but he's kind of pinned in the gum with that fly. Um, so anyway, this is, a, yeah, huh? it's borderline. <laughs> it's borderline. As soon as I get this net on him, he's gonna wanna run, but yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Let him run a little bit if he, I mean, I like all fish, I try to land him as fast as I can. Oh, got him. Nice, right into the net. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's feisty. Oh, that's a good sized fish. Oh, he's fat. So these things, they're eating now. That's awesome. These guys are slippery as heck. Very slippery fish. So there he is, right there. Took that ant right in the mouth there. So again, there's that little ant that we caught him on. That's a grass carp right there. Cool fish, man. That's a, he's got belly on him for sure. All right, let's let him settle in the water here for a second. Get him underwater. Just kind of holding him with the net in place. Kind of let, he's right up. He's gonna be ready to go, so. And so I could take him out of the net or let's see if we can get him to just swim straight out of the net there he goes look at that there he goes all right guys that's the first grassy on a dry fly well i think since the beginning of the summer um caught one on a nymph a few weeks ago i'm trying to think i caught a grass carp on the dry in june i want to say was it may or june before we went up to alaska and we shot all that alaska film and then, um, yeah, after that, I haven't caught one. So it's September, middle of September now, and uh, it's gonna be an awesome fall. They're already starting, as soon as that temperature dropped, like clockwork, they're already back on top water. Heck yeah, guys, let's get another one. Heck yeah. So here we go, just caught that first grass carp. That hook is bent up a little bit, as you guys can see. I don't have a ton more of these ants on me, so I'm gonna try to kind of bend it back down a little. Um, it's just such big fish. So, and these little, you know, this is a dry fly of foam for, for trout, um, maybe small bass. So not gonna last very long with these big carp, but try to give this fly another go. So guys, I got some uh, kind of some cool news. I got my Arizona guide license last week and uh, I've had some people asking me about guiding the canals and help them get on grass carp and bass so I'm not only going to do fly fishing too other people have reached out to me about um, spin fishing the canals and urban ponds for bass 
Um, so fly fishing or spin fishing. Yeah, so if you guys are interested, let me know. You can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. You can send me messages on those. Um, I should have my business email address listed on the YouTube, uh, on my YouTube homepage or whatever in the description if you guys want to check it out there. But if you're interested, just reach out to me and, uh, and we'll talk about it. But anyway, let's get back to fishing and try to catch another one of these awesome grass carp. Okay, I'll try a little bit more, but it does not seem like they're wanting to eat as much. Maybe, maybe it's the time. Maybe I caught them at the tail end of their feeding today. Um, I came out when I did today. What time did I get out here? Maybe close to 10 because there was just no activity before then previously for whatever reason but okay this cart turned around for it guys i think we got a gamer here got him guys yep got a gamer all right where's the nearest stairwell yep Again, it's it's awesome. You can kind of just basically, this is a nice fish. Oh yeah, that's a good fish, guys. So you can almost tell which ones are gonna play. Cause this one hit around him and he turned around and did not swim away. He turned around and looked for the fly. So I knew he was ready to eat. Did I, did I lose him? Nope, I still got him. <laughs> I'll keep talking. Again, I'm not sure how well I got this one hooked, but, and, this and we had to bend this hook back into shape so definitely want to be careful with this fish the closest stairwell i got i'm about 30 yards away from it it's just past that light post over there um it's awesome i just saw like four groups of like five carp and i was casting in the middle of them and none of them moved towards the fly and really like you don't even waste your time with them they're not showing signs that they want it as soon as I saw this carp and put a fly remotely close to him, he heard it hit the water and he turned towards it right away. So he gave me the clue. I'm ready to eat. So he was ready to play. Look at this fish, guys. I think this is a nice fish. I think this is a pretty dang good sized one. All right, here we go. We're at a stairwell here. I hope we can land this fish. I hope he does not bend the hook. Um, yeah, we're going to just have to try to play this one well, play it smart. And, uh, that's why we got the big net out here. Be able to try to, I used to fish for these and come out with a, a smaller net and it was, oh man, I'd have the toughest time trying to catch these fish. Uh, let's see here. I think this is a pretty nice fish bigger than the first one I'm almost positive yeah let me see yeah that's a good fish I'm probably pushing 10 pounds and on a six weight you can kind of tell when there he's got his body towards the bottom right now and he's like just digging in when they got that girth on him they can do that oh I got the hook down in his mouth so he's hooked on the bottom which means I don't have as much control over the fish over his head. If I can, if I can, if it's hooked in the upper lip, I can kind of control his head a little bit more. But right now I think that hook's buried in the bottom and I can't, it's hard to control the lower jaw because the lower jaw is kind of closer in their body line to their big old bellies. So I don't know. I, I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling like we might have to get lucky to land this fish but we'll just see here. Let's see, that's why we got the big net though. Yeah, this is a nice fish. Oh yeah. Come on, come on, here he comes. Oh, no, nope, turned away. This fish is capable of breaking this line, so that's why I'm not gonna tighten the drag up yet. Come on, buddy. I love this though. I love netting them by myself, to be honest. Um, uh, I mean, it, it definitely helps when you're fishing with somebody else to have them net them, but 
for me, this is just a part of the experience and a part of the challenge being able to net these guys uh, by myself. Hard enough to get them to bite, hard to net them. <laughs> it's all part of the fun. Okay, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Just, oh, I almost had him, guys. And then I scared him, he saw the net. Oh, he was close to getting in there. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take a risk. Tighten up the drag ever so slightly. But uh, that's a tough fish. Oh, that's such a cool fish, man. So I got the GoPro is on my chest. Always tough to try to keep it pointed at the action, especially when you gotta get this close to the water to try to net these guys. But anyway, do what I can. <laughs> Oh, this is good fish. Man, that, that hook being at the bottom of the mouth makes a huge difference. They get to fight so much harder than when it's in the top of the mouth, the top lip. lip. But, hey man, I'm, not, I'm just trying to get them to eat the fly, let alone trying to figure out what direction the hook is gonna be able to get into their mouths at. Uh, all right, come on, buddy. Let's do this. Let's do this together. Let's just, let's get you unhooked. And then, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show the people what you look like. I'll look at, yeah, and then I'll let you go. You know, this is, this can be teamwork. All right, guys, let's see. Okay, come on, buddy. Whatever you do, do not put your finger on the line when you're fighting these guys. They will, again, one head turn, one run, and they will break your line. So, you know, just like my hand is here, I'm just tightening up my, uh, you know, my uh, drag right here as I see fit. But, um, you know, if he's gonna do a power move and run, you just gotta let him do that. And, uh, let's see here, okay. Oh man, this guy, this is a tough fish. I wish I could get his head up, but it's just hard to pick up his head when the hook's on the bottom of the mouth. Okay. Let's just cut it. Oh, yeah. Awesome fight. This fish is awesome. This fish is awesome. Not yet. Almost, guys. <laughs> We're so close. We are close, guys. We are close. I can't believe we got this fish hooked the way we got this. Okay, I got his head up out of the water for a second. Come on. Got him in the net. Got him, guys. That's a good fish. Woo, yeah. That's fat. It is, ooh, baby. It's a fat, fat carp. Look at that, guys. I'm gonna try to show you how we had him hooked here. Yeah, look at that. Look how we had him hooked in the bottom of the mouth there. And that hook was dug in pretty well. Well, no, not too much. It's a big fish, guys. This one might be over 10. And these guys are super slippery, but. All right, let me see. Hold on to his tail. Once he's ready to go, he'll. <laughs> He will kick hard and splash the crap out of me. <laughs> Guys, that fish just soaked me. <laughs> Ooh, canal water, yummy. That tastes awesome. All right guys, heck yeah, number two on the day. Dried myself off after that nice refreshing splash from releasing that carp and uh, all right, I'm ready to get on another one guys. Let's get to it. Oh, guys, <laughs> he came up. Oh, no. Dang it, guys. I think he just broke me off. 
Yep. Darn it. Sorry, fish. You got a hook in your mouth. That looked like a big fish, maybe 12, 13 pounds. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I tie good knots, but that knot has been flexing through two fish. Maybe I should have tied a new knot before I kept on going on. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that one, uh, that was a quick head shake and he just snapped me off right at the fly. Well guys, I didn't have another one of those ant flies and after that carp broke me off, I decided to call it a day. That's why I normally use 10 pound line or higher 10 to 12 pound line because these fish get big and uh, they'll definitely break you off a lot if you're using under 10 pounds. But anyway guys, I hope you liked the video. Please hit that like button if you did. Drop me a comment. Guys, thanks so much for joining Kevin Rap Cook Fishing. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.